I'm Dr. Bapat from uh, Minneapolis, United States, and it's a privilege uh, to interview Dr. Anita Asgar, Head of Structural in Montreal Heart at uh, Europe, uh, London Wall 2023. Anita, uh, welcome to London, my Thank old you. hometown. So we are here to discuss uh, new processes with better hemodynamics for uh, indication which could be wall involved. Uh, so Anita, what's your impression in the last 10 years of wall in wall and the growth of wall in wall in your practice and across the world? It's a great question. I mean, we've been treating patients with surgical aortic valve replacement for years, and now we're seeing these patients who are still healthy enough to need another intervention coming back. And so it's a whole set of challenges that we didn't see before when we started with TAVR. We didn't see these patients. We were treating these elderly patients, and now we're getting patients who are maybe not as sick, but sick enough that another surgery is not the best option, and they come back for, you know, for consideration of valve and valve. And when you consider these patients for valve in valve, of course it is to maintain probably the hemodynamics or make them even maybe better. So what are the challenges in the valve in valve field which we today have? Yeah, it's a great question. So some of these patients come with previous bypass grafts, but a lot of them had isolated AVRs. And so the challenges we're facing now is we need to preserve coronary access. But these are also patients who are reasonably active and we need to give them a good hemodynamic result. We need to really improve their symptoms so they can have good quality of life. And so these are the, the main issues that we're experiencing. So we want to be able to replace the valve, give them a good hemodynamic resu result, but also preserve access to the coronary arteries so if they need an intervention for the coronaries, we can do that. So that's very important. In wall in wall, we saw even today and even previously that hemodynamics and coronary access necessarily don't go hand in hand. And so there could be in patients where you could probably have better hemodynamics, but also maintain. So can you explain me a bit about uh, Durover, which is a new balloon expandable device? What are the important features of this valve? Right, so maybe to put it in context, you know, Durovar was something that came up in our institution because of a patient. So we had a patient who had a previous aortic valve replacement, but no bypass grafts and needed another intervention. And so we were stuck looking for a solution for a patient who we needed to have coronary access on, but we needed good hemodynamics. And so there entered Durovar in our institution because I was searching for a valve that would be a short frame valve but I wanted to give the patient a good hemodynamic result, and I had concerns in a smaller surgical valve that I wasn't going to get that with the commercially available balloon expandable short frame. And what was the surgical valve in consideration? So it was a trifecta 23. So non-fracturable, non-modifiable, non exactly. and uh, we know that the challenge with externally mounted leaflets Absolutely. as well. So you probably had uh, limited choice, I would say. Absolutely, and so one of the attractive features of the Duravar is the fact that it has short frame uh, it's a short frame valve, the windows are large, coronary axis is preserved, but then it's really the superior hemodynamics. You know, the single leaflet construction, no suture lines, and really being able to put a intraannular prosthesis in place in a short frame, but then giving a good hemodynamic result and being able to get back in the coronary. That's wonderful. So can you just tell us a bit more about your patient and how did the procedure go and what your follow-up has been? Absolutely, so we did this procedure, I think it was back in July. Um, we got special access in Canada, so compassionate use to get access to this valve. The team came, we implanted it. He's 84 years old, but very active. Initially on the table, post uh, valve deployment, we had a mean gradient of seven. The following day on transthoracic echo, we had a mean gradient of 13. So in a small trifecta, with a balloon expandable intraannular valve, and that's spectacular. You know, we will often not get as good results, even with superannular valves. Yeah. And I've seen him in follow-up. He's at three months out. He's doing well. He's functional class one, and the gradient has stayed low. So. And for coronary access, did you protect the coronary? Is it being trifecta, or did you not protect the coronary? What was your strategy? Right. So it was another good question. I mean, he had a very small um, valve to STJ diameter, and so techniques like basilica aren't really going to help us because the problem isn't really at the leaflet. So we actually snorkel stented or chimney stented the right coronary, which was in the the biggest concern. We did that at the same time and he's been doing well in the angina, he feels great. So you would say that by choosing this valve, you got supranular hemodynamics maybe, with, despite the fact that it... I mean, it's certainly as good as the results we've seen with um, the supranular valves that we've used, though actually even better, I would say. 
um, in a valve like that. So we were very happy and we were able to get into the coronaries and do what needed to be done. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing this case. So Durabur is a balloon expandable, shorter profile valve which gives, maintains the hemodynamics. And I think early results have really shown not just the hemodynamics, but even blood flow superiority in terms of energy loss, etc. Some of the science which I don't understand as a surgeon. Uh, but I think hopefully uh, patients like yours who have small bioprosthesis will also benefit from this prosthesis. Yeah, I mean, I think it's early days, and so we're not really sure where the technology is going. But as a clinician, I think it, it's, um, it's a great opportunity to have access to a technology that may help us with what, what's going to probably be a tsunami of valve and valve procedures that we're going to have to do. Absolutely. So again, I should thank you for thank you. leading the field in this. It's always most hard, I think, getting a new prosthesis and then trying it. And I think we have seen that such iterations are going to be very useful for our patients. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.